Good morning and welcome back to Coffee Talk. I am Coach Roxanne and you are joining me live on the Better Body Fitness fan page. Welcome, 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 my friends. Uh, new background today, not so new. I was here for, I wanna, I think like six months last year. New to this moment though, new to this moment. Good morning, once you're on, drop it in the comments, my friends. Happy Monday, Beth, good morning. Charlene, good morning. Uh, crazy, I don't know why, but because I'm here in this room, like the echo, echo, hello. <laughs> Amber, good morning. Lisa, good morning. Monica, hello. Hootsa, good morning. As some of you may have seen on Seen Saw, some of you may have seen on Coach Chuck's post last week, he needed a uh, overhaul in the office. So we overhauled the office, but now all of the office is in the coffee talk area. <laughs> Deanna, you're in the kitchen. Kylie, good morning. Lynn, good morning. Carrie, good morning. Wiping sleepy out of my eyes. Uh, you're not kidding. Like, <laughs> uh, too up close and personal. It was funny. I was looking at myself and I'm like, something doesn't look right. When I turn this off, <laughs> I feel you, Carrie. I totally feel you today. Dee Dee, good morning. Sarah, good morning. Kurat Kramer, good morning. Victoria, good morning. Ruth, hello. Michelle, good morning, Coach and BBF peeps. Christina, good morning. Lisa, the struggle, that is the struggle organizing, right? Like you have to move a mess to organize a mess. But once it's all done, it's amazing, right? And you purge and everything is nice and shiny and clean, right? Like you have to keep the end goal in mind. But I know some of you that have like redone your kitchens or your bathrooms or remodeled, like I've heard you guys talk about that craziness of not having your space. Totally get it. Uh, Kim, good morning. Amy, good morning. Corey, good morning, Coach and Clutch. Uh, I'm slamming the coffee today. We we worked at that all, pretty much all weekend and until 7 p.m. last night. And then and then okay, so I have a question. All night long, I could I couldn't sleep because I kept thinking, what does P O V mean? What is P O V? Does anybody know what that is? P O V. I see it in TikToks and it drove me crazy all night Point long. View. What? Point of view. Point of view. <laughs> I literally, I literally lost sleep over that all night long. Point of view. <laughs> Do you ever have one of those things that just keeps running through your mind that is totally random and useless, but you can't make it go away? I was going to open up my phone in the middle of the night to Google it so I could stop thinking about it. Now I... Now I know. Now I know. Holly, good morning. Oh, Ruth, God, can't, yes. <laughs> can't wait to show my end project. Should finish today. I cannot wait to see it. Heidi, good morning. Oh, Holly, story. Holly said point of view. What? So you remember when they had AOL Messenger? AOL Messenger, yes. Yes, and that was the very first time I was on the chat, and the person on the other side typed in BRB. BRB. <laughs> I thought, like, I thought, like, burp? <laughs> burp? 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nicole, good morning. Hootsack. So will Chuck meet his deadline for the updated space? Yes. The only thing that might not be here is the whiteboard, but it's on its way. But yes, he will make that deadline. So pretty, uh, you know, that was just, I thought about that yesterday, how a lot of times as spouses, when, when our significant other takes something on, we kind of let them take something on. I feel like Chuck and I are very different in that aspect where even though this is his coach and his deadline, anything that pushes Chuck forward pushes me forward. Anything he learns from his coach, I learn from his coach. So I love to, it's kind of like the osmosis thing, right? <laughs> so I was right in there with him pretty much every step of the way until I, until like it hits a certain time where I have to sleep, then I have to be done. Debbie, good morning. Sue, good morning. Jason broke his tooth off and had to get it pulled. So I keep dreaming my teeth are falling out. Oh, I know. <laughs> I mean, it's not funny, Jason. I'm very sorry, but Carrie, that is... That is kind of funny. Hootsex said, way to go. I, Amy, good morning. I am taking pictures. 
So when all is said and done, uh, it was an interesting process. Three coats of primer over the green paint. And then we did the paint, then we did the white coat, and now we'll have to do some touch-ups, touch but it'll be done. Heather, good morning. Ashley, good morning. All right, we better get on with the show today. So the title of my show, and I wish I could say this in a Boston accent, but I can't, is, come on already. Oh no, that's not Boston. What is that? <laughs> come on already. What is that? That sounds more like a New York. New York. Yeah, that's what I. That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what it sounds like. So, Carrie, good morning. So, what am I talking about? I'm talking Forget about, about it. <laughs> Forget about it. Come on already. Results are never going to happen fast enough. I wish, like, even for myself, I fall into these things too, where I'm like, I have been doing something for eight weeks. I have been doing something for 12 weeks. Why don't I see something? Even though I know things are happening. I know I am, I know I'm happier and healthier than I was before I started eight or 10 weeks ago or six months ago or a year ago, but it's just so crazy the tricks our mind plays on us. Jenny, good morning. Kirsten, good morning. But results will never happen fast enough. I feel like we need to put that on a billboard. I feel like we need to put that somewhere where we can look at it all the time so that we don't forget. Results will never happen fast enough. There's no but that follows that. There's no, well, if you do this, None of that. It just is a fact. Is it kind of a sucky fact? Yes, but it's still a fact. Results are slow. Maybe in the beginning of a journey, and I think this is where we, we get these crazy expectations. We start the journey. We start our first 21-day challenge. We lose five pounds or we lose 10 pounds. And we're like, this is amazing. And then it stops. It doesn't stop. It just slows drastically down because our body realizes what we're doing. Our body goes through changes just like our mindset does. Our body is going to fight change just like our mindset. Ruth, had the pity party on my slow results last night. Perfect timing for this talk. Michelle, slow results for me for sure. Struggle to accept that. I get it, my friend. I get it. Brecken, good morning. And I'm going to talk more about it. You know, the second you get frustrated, right? The second you get frustrated, what comes to mind? And I know what it is because I've heard it so many times over. Why bother? Why not just go back to what I was doing before? Why not go back to the alcohol? Why not go back to the food? Why not go back to doing what I was doing before? Why should I kill myself in the kitchen? Why should I work out? Why should I drink my water? Because it's so much more than the actual physical results that you can see. There's so much that's happening inside your body that we can't see, but we are such visual people. We want to see everything happen as fast as possible. We are the people who want to go down the road, buy a meal, buy a coffee, get it right now, right now, right now. And we expect to see the same things out of our body. Uh, Kirsten, slow and steady wins the race. It does. It does win the race. And it's, it's crazy that we have to keep reminding ourselves of that. Lisa, so slow. I know it. I know it, my friend. But the second you get frustrated by how slowly the momentum is and you want to quit, you need to keep going. You have to keep going. You need to keep pushing through. I like to say, even in our workouts, when you can't, when they, you, there's that last rep or two that's so hard, this is where the magic happens. Because it is so much more than your body. It's also this. It's the mindset. They are hand in hand. They work together in unison. That is where the magic happens. The second you're frustrated and you feel like quitting and you take a step forward to not stop, that is where the magic happens, Beth. Because if I go back, I feel like sheesh, I, sheesh, same here, I agree. I don't ever wanna go back. Do I have moments where my mind starts to tell me, why are you eating all of, why are you eating all of this delicious healthy food? Why are you putting in the work? Because I remember what I felt like last August. And will that happen if I go back to what I was doing before? Yes. Because I have come leaps and bounds. Here we are a year later and I love how I feel. I love the energy. I love the mindset. I love those things. But I, like you, am human. And I, 
maybe I want to see abs. Maybe I want to see a thinner butt. Maybe I want to see bigger arms. I don't know. It's something for all of us, right? We just want to see more and more and more. And when we can't see more, when we can't beast mode our body into more, the thought comes in to quit. We cannot quit because we will end up right back here again in a year from now. We will be back on that roller coaster, yo-yoing about. We just cannot keep doing that to ourselves. Um, Ruth, it's such a mental challenge to get past. Beating myself up after spending the day throwing out old clothes and going down two sizes. My mind still said you suck, digging deeper. My friend, that is what the, isn't that crazy? You can look at the amazing accomplishment and our mind still plays those crazy, crazy tricks on us. You, you know, I hope that when you get in these moments, I hope you have a book you can read. I hope you have a podcast you can listen to. I'm so happy you jumped on here. Can you imagine where you'll be in a year from now? Can you even imagine, even if it's not in the perfect body, can you imagine where this will be in a year from now if you conquer this today? Do you even think about where your mindset was a year ago compared to where it is today? I'm sure it's leaps and bounds. Michelle, yep, I have to remember that. Had a piece of cake with Halo for our anniversary this weekend, and I just don't feel good today. Oh, but Michelle, same here. I had a drink yesterday, and now my stomach has been turning all morning, right? I mean, and that just tells you your body is doing something. Your body recognizes now the good things you've been doing for it. So when you put the bad in, it kind of rebels against you. You know, um, I, kn I know for a lot of people who quit, they, they do quit. They quit the eating healthy. They quit the exercising. They quit the hydration. They quit the smoothie. I have seen it happen for years. When people, when people they say, this program doesn't work for me. This program doesn't work for me. It's not the program. It's not the program. It's consistency. It's putting in the work every day. When you say this program, that is such a vague, what do you mean? The workouts, the nutrition, the hydration, the smoothies, these things are working for you. They're not working against you. So when you quit, you're not quitting on that program. You're quitting on yourself like you've done in the past with every single kind of diet that you've tried to do. This has to be about lifestyle. This has to be about doing something today that you can see yourself doing five years from now, that you can see yourself doing 10 years from now. I know people who say this doesn't work for me, but they never look at their weekends. They're unwilling to go through the change so that something will work for them. They're unwilling to look at their mindset because if you tell yourself nothing is working for you, if you tell yourself nothing will change for you, you're right. Nothing is going to work for you. Nothing will change for you. If that is the mindset that you have, if that is what you are telling yourself, you are right. No program will ever outwork your mindset. It won't. Ruth, right? Am I right? If you did not conquer that mindset, even though you saw these results in time, wouldn't you say it just didn't work for me? Even though you have the results, our minds are so strong. If we don't learn to conquer that, it will conquer us. It will drive us for that next step, whether that's the step we want to take or a step we don't want to take. The mind will drive you. Uh, Lori, change your batteries like the Energizer Bunny and keep going slow and steady. Steady is better than quitting. And I want to say something about that. When your batteries are running low, do you notice your mindset also is low, it's sad, it's depressed. When you come off of a weekend where it was go, 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 and you didn't take time to energize, how do you feel on Monday morning? What does your mindset tell you on Monday morning when you're still burnt out from last week because you didn't take time to recover over the weekend? You have to learn to check in with those things. If you don't start to recognize them, you're gonna end up going back to where you started. You've gotta learn to recognize that. Carrie. This past weekend, I had a friend text me, asked me if I still was part of BBF, and I said yes. She was like, good for you, don't give up. I did. Oh, and I'm back feeling awful. 
It's so mental, but also nutrition is key. Hopefully she reaches out and wants to change her lifestyle for the better. You know what? And all you can do is be there to support her. The one thing I would have said to her is, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? Do you need somebody to send you a text in the morning? Do you want to send me pictures of your food? But you have to be careful. You have to be cautious. Not that we don't want to help others, but we also don't want to get sucked down into why it's not working for them because that can very easily happen when we care about the people around us. Ruth, change requires change. Mindset is number one. Yes, it is. Uh, I have so many notes here. You know, our body is like our minds. Our body is like our mind. It doesn't want to change. I know you think it does. Your body does not want to change. Your body wants to stay the same. Do you ever end up noticing that, for those of you who still weigh yourself, your body seems to be very comfortable at one certain weight. Did anybody notice that? It doesn't want to change. You have to stay consistent. Your body does not want to change. It doesn't want to lose any more fat. It doesn't want to gain any more muscle. It just wants to be comfortable and happy. Just like we really do until we start to create those foundational habits. Keep on going. The second that you quit, you'll never know what you were capable of. It might take a year. It might take two years. But your results will snowball. Ruth, I think you've already had that and you might not even realize it. The fact that you have packed up all of those clothes and are now two sizes smaller... At one point in time, your results snowballed. Here you are today getting rid of all those clothes. Your results snowballed. You need to stay consistent. At an, in another year from now, you'll have another snowball, maybe even six months from now. Amy, yep, I get it. My body's the same way. My body loves where it's at. My body does not want to change very easily. What I'm not going to do is go beast mode it. What I'm not going to do is starve myself. I said to Chuck when I have these conversations, like, I know I'm doing everything that I could be doing. I know I am. I know I'm on point. My mind tells me, maybe we should start eating less. Maybe we should start exercising more. And then I have to remind myself, you are not going to do that forever. And that's what this journey is all about. Lifestyle, lifestyle, lifestyle. We have to learn to love our bodies where they are at right now. No matter where you're at, no matter what size you are, no matter how healthy or unhealthy you are, we have to learn to love our body so that when we say that, we really mean it. I don't want to do anything that I'm not going to do six months from now. I don't want to do anything that I'm not willing to do a year from now. I want to do things that are creating that lifelong lifestyle. Uh, they won't be uncomfortable forever. That's right. Ruth, Ruth said, wearing clothes now that are a bit uncomfortable again, but that's how I started. They won't be uncomfortable forever. That's right. That is exactly right. right. Um, you know, when we work out, I stress all the time about perfecting your form, perfecting your technique. Like, I feel like I'm a little crazy about it, but it's so important. You know, do, it, it'll be, it's so much more effective when you get it right, right? When you get it right. In the short term, though, does it not seem harder? When I'm telling you the form to use, the right technique, in a moment, doesn't it seem harder? Doesn't it seem like I made, made that move harder? But in the long run, you'll get better at it. You'll be more efficient. You'll be stronger. In the short term, it's going to hurt a little bit more. That's every single result that we try and work for. In the short term, it hurts. It hurts just a little more. But in the long run, we become more efficient. And that is the goal. That's the goal. It's why it can be harder to lose the weight when you've been at a certain weight for so long. How long have you been at this weight? A year? Two years? Three, why would we think that that weight is just going to go away, that it's just going to change after six months, maybe even after a year? Your body has been conditioned to so many things. It's been conditioned to alcohol. It's been conditioned to low calories. It's been conditioned to over overindulgence of calories. It's been conditioned to sugar. It's going to take time. I want you to think about how long your body was conditioned in those things 
and maybe cut it in half and maybe that's how long it will take you to get where you want to go. So if that was 10 years, maybe it'll take you five years. I know that that's a tough pill to swallow, but it is what it is. Maybe it will happen faster. Maybe. But if you start to put that expectation on it, what's going to happen? You're going to get frustrated. Take the time it took for you to get there. Cut it in half. Give yourself that much time. And then give yourself beyond that because again, you're creating a lifestyle. This isn't all about just the number on a scale. It isn't all about just a size of clothes. This is about overall health. This is about fighting cancer, heart disease. For those of us on medication for a high cholesterol, high blood pressure, that's the, we're trying to fight all of that not just to get ourselves to a certain weight. And when we can let that go, we can start to recognize our wins. We can start to celebrate the body we have. Uh, oh my gosh, that was me and push-ups. <laughs> that is why my abs are still on fire, Carrie. I love it, I love it, I love it. Michelle, no, I know the frustration. This is why the foundational habits are so important. They will hold you through those quitting moments. Your four S's should become just, you could do them in your sleep. So when you do have a bad day, the four S's are still there. When you do feel like quitting, the four S's are still there. Make them a habit, make them a habit, make them a habit. That no matter what happens, maybe you missed a workout. Maybe you ate something that wasn't on your plan. Maybe the whole day was off plan, but you still did your smoothie. You still got your steps. You still got your water. Even though the other things didn't work, maybe they didn't go as planned. Your foundational four S's are still building that foundation. They're holding you up there for those moments of weakness. Does this suck? Yes. Yes. Yes, of course it does. Are we going to keep moving forward? Absolutely. 100%. We are not going to quit. We are beyond quitting. We can see ourselves still doing this a year from now. We can still see ourselves doing this five years from now, right? That's the long game. That's what we want to do. Change requires change and it takes time for our bodies to embrace the change. Change requires change, even for our bodies. Nicole, I used to be all about the number on the scale. Now I can see my lifestyle changes and so much happiness has come from that. I love that. Sarah, I try not to miss two days in a row for all the habits. And the, exactly, 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 exactly. They are the bricks that are holding you up. Keep building that strong foundation, my friends. Stay consistent, keep your eyes on the big picture, on the long haul, on the lifestyle, on the journey, because this isn't about fast. This isn't about quick. If it is, it's just going to be another diet like every other diet you've ever done in your life. This is not a diet. This is a lifestyle. We're going to make a life out of this. We're going to share this with our significant others. We're going to share this with our children. We're going to share this with our friends and our family. All right, my friends, that's where I'm going to end it. I'm going to be back here tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Coach Chuck is going to be live at noon with the nuggets. My friends, go out and have a fantastic day. And no matter what's going on out, out here, up here, stay strong. If you haven't got your smoothie in yet, go get your smoothie in. If you haven't gotten your workout in, do five minutes of something before you stop today. You can do this. You are stronger than you know. I believe in you. You are amazing. I love you all. Go out and have a great day.